Hi there, my name is Kim Moon and, and I am a twin flame channel and Western astrologer. And this is a video about the new moon in Cancer taking place on July 17th at 2.31 p.m. If you happen to be on the Eastern Seaboard of the United States, this is the update for the Divine Counterpart Collective. Thank you so much for all your likes, subscribes, shares, and watches. I just put out something called Creator Conference, and so many of you participated. It was wonderful to be able to share with you guides, teachers, tools, and resources to help you facilitate greater self-empowerment during this major season of manifestation, crossroads, and change. If you haven't had an opportunity, the videos will be there and for free on YouTube in a playlist called Creator Conference for you to look at whenever you're ready. If you want to re-listen, you can do that. It's all part of my fifth anniversary celebration, something I wanted to do for you guys as celebrating five years here on YouTube, and it was a lot of fun for me. I hope you all got something great out of it and that it was fun for you as well. This particular new moon in Cancer is unfolding here at the 24th degree of Cancer. Cancer deals with homes, families, mothers, mother figures, when female authority figures in our life. And cancer also deals with our emotions. And so this new moon in cancer is giving us an opportunity for transformation, growth, and change in the aforementioned areas because all of the outer planets <laughs> are having a conversation with it. We've got Pluto, which deals with change, growth, and transformation through the resurrection cycle. Neptune, which deals with change, growth, and transformation through the process of spiritual growth. We've got Uranus, which deals with quantum leaps in consciousness. And Chiron here speaking to it as well, which deals with change, growth, and transformation through transmuting wounds into wisdom. Each of these is having their own unique conversation with this particular new moon in Cancer, giving us an opportunity to quantum leap into a new chapter in our life and a change from the inside out. Now, I detail how all of this works in the Lightworker Energy Update. That is the video that is published simultaneously along this one for the Lightworking Collective, of which Divine Counterparts are part. And so I recommend if you'd like a deeper understanding of the totality of the new moon in cancer, I strongly recommend that you start there, especially if the week leading up to this new moon or two weeks leading up to it has been filled with either a lot of internal intensity or a lot of external change and transformation. I detail why that is, how to work with it and what to do about it in that new moon update. In this new moon update, we're just going to be talking about how this new moon impacts those who identify as part of the divine counterpart collective. Here is Juno, uh, the counterpart that represents the divine feminine in conversation with this new moon. It's loose. She's about 10 degrees away. Nevertheless, that still means she's pretty heavily featured as a piece of this lunation. And uh, all of those planets that I just mentioned are in conversation with her. Now, each of these planets are life-changing planets. Just one of them in conversation with a personal planet, Sun, Moon, Mars, Venus, Mercury, or Juno. Um, each one of them in a conversation with a personal planet is going to change our lives. But instead of just one of them in conversation with a personal planet, we've got four of them in communication with the divine feminine energetic fields, as well as our emotional fields collectively. And so what this is telling us is that everything she stands for is up for transformation, growth, and change through her emotional and interior world and reality. Now, what the, what Juno stands for in mundane astrology is partnerships, commitments, marriages, 
She also stands for, um, she is one of the mothers of the Zodiac, especially when she shows up in the sign that deals with motherhood and that's cancer. And so for many during this period of time, there may be a completion of a cycle or a season as it pertains to motherhood and the beginning of a new one. For some of you, this is going to represent conceiving. For others of you, this is going to represent birth. For others of you, you may wreck it, have a child that is graduating, moving out of you know the early dependency years and in, going into school moving from school into adulthood and living more independently. And still for others of you, you may be realizing that you're not going to be a mom at this time because we also have creation goddess. She's one of the mothers of the Zodiac speaking with the South node, representing the completion of a cycle or the completion of a season in motherhood as well. Full moons, uh, represent completions, new moons, new beginnings, but we have Pluto speaking to this particular new moon and Pluto itself deals with endings and completions. And so you may be on track at this time to say, you know what, maybe motherhood isn't where I'm at. It's not what I want, or it's just not, you know, the ways that it's available to me. Those aren't pathways that I choose for myself. And this may be the beginning of a season of coming to terms with or peace with that, reevaluating uh, your life path and or options and what this opens up for you. Um, it may be that having children the way you thought you were going to have children isn't going to be the pathway, but maybe there's another open door for having children at this new moon in cancer or having family at this new moon in cancer. Cancer deals with families. This is where Juno sits. There may be a reconstruction of the way family is set up for you that you may find at this lunation is something that you're dealing with. Okay. And so none of this, you know, especially if you're one of the women who are feeling grief around this through your divine feminine energy fields, I would just like to acknowledge that grief might be very normal. Um, and simultaneously, <clears throat> I did have uh, a couple of clients come through who were feeling a lot of external pressure, either from physicians or from family to figure it out right, right now. And that just wasn't on their heart. It wasn't in their spirit to figure out right, right now. Um, but externally people have been putting pressure on them to get to an answer on a timeline that they think is appropriate for them. And so I'm going to tell you guys what I told these clients, um, in the last several weeks, you get to choose what your relationship and your timing for motherhood is no one gets to dictate that to you. If you decide that you want to give birth later in your life, you can. Yes, we understand there are some risks associated with that. It doesn't mean it hasn't been done. And that doesn't mean that there aren't physicians out here who will support you in that and help you find your way to healthy a healthy maternal path, whatever that looks like for you. You get to do it your way. It is your life. It is your body and your creative authority that gets to dictate what happens for you. Okay. So I really want to be able to share that with you guys and say, you know, it was that saying from Dirty Dancing, nobody puts baby in a corner. Okay. You get to do this your way. Um, and that's really some of what this Venus retrograde is about. I spoke extensively about that during the Lightworker energy update. So I'm not going to get into that here only to say that it's a season of reclaiming your creative authority and certainly motherhood is a part of that. Okay. Motherhood or not motherhood, like you get to choose full stop. All right. 
Um, there is an energy of Nessus here, having a conversation also with the divine feminine uh, and this new moon in Cancer. Nessus deals with obsession and things that we may loop and get a little obsessive about overthinking in our minds. Um, and so when Nessus is over here in the very spiritual sign of Pisces, you know, um, there could be a lot of spiritual processing going on in the divine feminine energetic fields at this time, a lot of spiritual and emotional processing and blossoming into a deeper understanding of, you know, true purpose and pathway and the divine feminine energetic fields. And that Nessus has created a bit of internal pressure to really deal with uh, perhaps some of the emotional pieces that may need attention at this time. Some of the emotional processing that may be demanding uh, some tenderness and some time with Chiron speaking to the divine feminine, our woundedness may be up collectively speaking. And when I just, I mean, there are a lot of new people here, so I just want to make sure I say this. Divine feminine, divine masculine, we all have both energies. We all have a, the polaric flow of both energy systems within us. And so regardless of your gender, you may be experiencing what I'm talking about here um, around that dynamic, intrinsic demand for transformation, growth, and change that's been brought forward by your internal emotional reality at this time. Okay. And so with Chiron influencing our divine feminine and energetic fields, there's a lot of motivation to heal. There's a ton of motivation to really look at what do I need to heal specifically in order to really open up pathways to partnership, pathways to collaboration, pathways to union, if there's nothing to heal, what do I need to do? What do I need to release in my emotional patterning just to be able to be on the timeline for allowing love to come in, anchor, and land with me? Some of you are going to recognize this as a moment in time where you really need to turn toward certain pain and suffering and trauma from your past and really integrate it and embrace it gently, caringly, lovingly, tenderly. And others of you are going to be recognizing in this energy, you've spent way too long looking at your pain and processing it and then reprocessing it and then processing the reprocessing and then reprocessing how you've previously processed it all the other times. Some of you have done this enough and it's time to let it go. And it's time to turn and face light and life and love and really anchor in the energy of emo a positive emotional orientation to connection and all the beauty that connection brings you in order to be able to cultivate more love. It's going to be different for each person, but you're going to see through this that you know whatever emotionally is coming up for you, if it's a lot of intensity, then yeah, there's probably some older pain that may need to get dealt with. If you're not experiencing any of that, don't force it. There may be some level of motivation to run toward light that you need to give yourself permission to do because you've done all the pain. You've sat in sorrow and suffering. You've been there long enough. And it's, the pendulum always swings in the opposite direction. You may be seeing everyone around you going through some intensity, but this may, may be your moment in time where you need to say, you know what? I can't be the processing ground for that for people. I need to be the processing and cultivation and developmental ground for releasing that from my energy system and stepping in and turning toward light. And there's nothing wrong with recognizing you cannot do that with people. You have to turn toward light for yourself if that's where you're at. Okay. Um, either way, you know, you're welcome to get a reading, to have a look at circumstances in your own life and how they are unfolding, certainly collectively when it comes to partnership, because Juno represents partnership. 
There are a lot of decisions that we're collectively being asked to make at this time when it comes to the way we are choosing to orient ourselves to important others that we have emotional ties with. Like I said, I detailed quite a bit of that extensively in the Lightworker Energy Update. Moving on to uh, our divine masculine energy that is Jupiter here. And again, we all have both energies regardless of our gender. In our divine masculine energetic field, we do see that Jupiter is having a very different journey at this time. We've already had a significant amount of change and transformation energy that Jupiter has had as Jupiter came out of Aries and stepped into Taurus well, 60 in the last 60 days, uh, 90 days, that would have been when Jupiter had his conversation with Pluto, his conversation with Neptune, um, and then his conversation with Saturn as well. And a closing conversation with Chiron that would have been intense from the beginning pieces of the year till now. That would have been a season where there would have been a demand in the divine masculine energetic fields to grow, to shift, to shape shift, to transform, to become something different and new. And so now we have a bit of reprieve in the divine masculine energetic fields, which is really nice to see. We've got some motivation for expanded consciousness with Mercury dealing with consciousness and communication and square to Jupiter. This could be like mind racing, lofty thoughts, tons of optimism, like, wow, this could be possible. Whoa, I could do that. Or I could create this, or I could call that in. I didn't realize I had so much power I was sitting on that maybe I could use uh, in greater ways to have greater impact or influence in my life or positively in the lives of other people. This is a time of great hope, great optimism, great expansion in the divine masculine energetic fields. Because we have the divine masculine energy speaking to Juno in our divine masculine energetic fields, we have the cultivation of an eye toward commitment as well. And Saturn, whenever Saturn and Juno are in conversation or communication with a singular other planet or with one another, they amplify their commitment energy because they have that in common with one another. So that gets amplified. There's definitely a commitment energy in the divine masculine energetic fields through this time period of expanded states of consciousness and mindset growth, uh, particularly in quality of life and finance. There's a lot of focus on getting grounded in up-leveling the quality of life, up-leveling the financial foundation in the divine masculine energetic fields with Jupiter sitting inside of Taurus and uh, in with Mercury inside of Leo and this Venus retrograde preparing to speak to the divine masculine energy field in square Venus also dealing with money and Taurus dealing with money. There's a lot of like, okay, I got to figure out the financials here. I got to get the numbers to make some sense. So there could be a lot of focus on that as well as focus on purpose and uh, getting aligned with purpose, getting aligned with, you know, what can I do here? What's my contribution here? What can be my impact here? What's, what are my options for creatorship here? There's a lot of questioning about that unfolding in the divine masculine energetic fields at this time, kind of a, where can I go from here? Given everything I've already done and become unfolding here, there's a bigger quest for meaning going on here. Um, you know, it's really funny when I go into these periods of like hyper creation, like I did with, um, the creator conference, it was a lot of work. Um, and one of the ways I got through it was just, um, listening to a lot of comedy in the background. I've always been a big fan of comedy. Um, and so I was listening to a lot of comedy in the background while I was putting together, you know, YouTube thumbnails and like sending out reminders and on and on writing copy, so on and so forth. Um, 
and one of the comedians I was listening to, um, very in the masculine energy. And he was like, you know, women got to understand something about the way masculine energy, or the way men work. And he said, the one, the one thing women just never seem to understand, but they need to know guys, we got to tell them when my money's not right. My beep never works. You fill in the blank with the beep. But he he was trying to communicate that his capacity um, to be an ardent or amorous passion, that type of physical co-creation, when his prowess and capacity to facilitate impact, influence, and create money as the validation for that in the world isn't happening. The two things are correlated. Second chakra. When he's not in that place where the money's flowing, neither are the other juices. And so he was explaining that in a very comedic way, but I've heard many men say this. I've heard many teachers uh, who talk about masculine and feminine dynamics say that. And I bring that up at this lunation because there's a real inside our divine masculine energetic fields. And now getting back to the energy of this, not the person of it. There's this real questioning around where do I fit and what's my purpose and how do I bring it to bear in the world? And where that question is unfolding in our masculine energy, there can be a bit less of a focus on trying to shack up and bed someone else. There can be a real like, you know, until I really figure this out, a sense of purposelessness, directionlessness, uh, self-doubt or questioning in any field for any person. It's not limited to people of a specific gender, given the way energy works. So I wanted to put that out there because it seemed really relevant to what I'm seeing here, where there's this real kind of like, okay, well, that hard part is done. Now what in the divine masculine energy fields? And in the now what, there's an opportunity to step into creatorship and divine creation and really call your shot. And that's what creator conference was about was giving you the opportunity to hear from people who might inspire you to think through, well, what's the best that could happen, you know? And that's really the questioning that's going on in the divine masculine fields now in a deeper way than it has been in the other points of this year. Okay. Um, There's a real call to focus on where there is light and where there is life in our divine masculine energy field so that we can create it Um, instead of focusing on darkness. Like I said, with the divine feminine, for some of you, there may be a sense of like, okay, yeah, I've done the dark parts. I have sat in the pain with the pain, with the heartbreak and the heartache spoken to my inner child, like I have done it up and down. It is time for me to focus on light. And I definitely see that in the divine masculine energy fields for sure. Okay. There could be a real call to focus, put our attention on light and life and things that bring those forth in us and in our world and lots of opportunity for that, Uh, which is a great anchor for the parts of our interior divine feminine world that are in transformation at this time. There's a way in which that internal union of both energies is giving us the opportunity to greet the changes with a, okay, so now what? As opposed to woe is me and lamenting, if there's an internal union of that masculine and feminine There can be a real peace with a lot of the changes that are unfolding at this time. It's when we have that internal separation from ourselves that we start to have this, like we can get into the polarity of everything being heavy or only things being light. And we get into that avoidance energy. Okay. So it's important to be focusing on where are these things able to come together within us. The gifting in this is that 
the, our inner divine masculine energy is holding the optimism and the possibility that things really could be better for us. And our internal divine feminine energy is walking through the door to change at this time. And so there's real gifting in that um, if we're allowing ourselves to have the experience of that inner union where it's like, okay, there's possibility here. Yes, things are changing, but it's not all bad. Okay. Now I get it. Sometimes, you know, there are seasons in connection where sometimes we're called to polaric living and you may find that, you know, you, the you who's listening to this really identifies as divine masculine energy incarnate. None of the divine feminine energy really resonated for you or the you who's listening to this may really resonate with what I shared could be going on in the divine feminine energetic fields. And that's okay too. There are reasons and seasons why we might be exploring one polarity versus the other but the growth path is the path toward that inner union. And so you, as much as you know, you're looking at the external and what people might be doing, the more you can cultivate the internal and see yourself in both energies, the more you anchor the place for union energy to anchor outside of you as well, okay? Uh, there's something else I wanted to say here. What was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Now, like I said, the divine masculine energy looks like it's in a bit of a growth spurt, um, and the divine feminine in a transformation cocoon. And if you're in a union conversation with your counterpart, let's talk about the people now. This may look like one of you feeling very called to change some ways you're working or and change the dynamics in the connection to make space for greater contribution out in the world. It's like, okay, uh, I need the way that either the way we're together or the way we're spending time apart to shift so that there's greater alignment for the becoming uh, here. And this may be a period of withdrawal if you're in a separation conversation and you're identifying your connection and separation this may be a period where kind of both people go back to their corners there's a little bit of withdrawal as both are called to some level of inner work and transformation okay um i do offer twin flame readings if you'd like to look at your chart and your counterparts chart if both people are showing up to the reading i do not offer them for individuals and at this time if you because the doorway the access point to union energy in the year of 2023 is through the doorway of the self and so if you're really wondering like about your journey and like you know there's all this change happening for you and you're trying to cultivate and manifest some level of union in the outer world, the way the divine counterparts met up in the sky back in January meant that this entire year and season is going to be a manifestation of union through self. They met up in the sign of the self and that was Aries. And so for those of you who really are ready to walk through that doorway, cultivate a union energy or a new love story in any capacity, we can do a reading about the patterns you've had in love and what the access point is through your personal chart so you can see your personal pathway to union. You can book with me for that over at kmoonastro.com. Link is below this video. And if you are a couple who's already you know, in a conversation together, maybe you watch these videos together. Hi, Jello. I love that you guys watch the videos together. It's really cute. I get lots of emails from couples that are like, we watch your videos together and they're so helpful. Thank you for that, first of all. And secondly, if you'd like to look at the pathway forward together, that's a 90 minute session and that's bookable on my site. Otherwise it's personal readings for individuals who'd like to figure out union. That's gonna be in the individual chart and that's a personal reading. So awesome to do this with you. First look, my take on the 
next lunation, 14 days from now, the full moon in Aquarius is available at the end of the Lightworker Energy Update. Again, that's the video that's published alongside this one. If you heard something that resonated for you, please hit the like button. And if you're new, subscribe. Welcome. Always great to have you here. I'm here at the new and full moon to break down how the energy works for our growth, benefit, and transformation. Can't wait to see you at the next lunation. Take great care and bye for now.